I'm coming to you today from the Word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm reading from the book of Daniel chapter 12, 1 Chronicles chapter 8, and John chapter 19. Daniel chapter 12. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked. Behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and an half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth, and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. First Chronicles chapter 8 Now Benjamin begat Bela his firstborn, Ashbel the second, and Ahara the third, Noah the fourth, and Rapha the fifth. And the sons of Bela were Adar, and Jira, and Abihu, and Abishua, and Naaman, and Ahoa, and Jira, and Shephuphan, and Hiram. And these are the sons of Ehud. These are the heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Jeba. And they removed them to Manahab. And Naaman, and Ahiah, and Jira, he removed them, and begat Uzzah, and Ahihud. And Shahariam begat children in the country of Moab after he had sent them away. Husham and Meara were his wives. He begat of Hodesh his wife, Jobab, and Zibiah, and Mesha, and Malcolm, and Jeus, and Shekiah, and Mirma. These were his sons, heads of the fathers. And of Husham he begat Abitu and Elpeal sons of Elpeal, Eber, and Misham, and Shamid, who built Ono and Lod with the towns thereof. Bariah also, and Shema, who were heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Agilon, who drove away the inhabitants of Gath, and Ahio, Sheshach, and Jeremoth, and Zebediah, and Arad, and Ader, and Michael, and Ispah, and Johah, the sons of Bariah. Zebediah and Meshalam and Hezekiah and Heber, Ishmari also and Jezliah and Jobab the sons of Elpal, and Jacob and Zikri and Zabdi and Elienai and Zilthi and Eliel and Adiah and Bariah and Shimrath the sons of Shimhai and Ishpan and Heber and Eliel and Abdon, and Zikri, and Hanan, and Hananiah, and Elam, and Entothijah, 
and Iphadiah, and Benuel of the sons of Sheshach, and Shem Shari, and Shehariah, and Athaliah, and Jerusiah, and Eliah, and Zikri, the sons of Jeroham. These were the heads of the fathers by their generations, chief men. These dwelt in Jerusalem. And at Gibeon dwelt the father of Gibeon, whose wife's name was Maacah, and his firstborn son Abdon, and Zer, and Kish, and Baal, and Nadab, and Geter, and Ahio, and Zachar. And Mikloth begat Shimea, and these also dwelt with their brethren in Jerusalem over against them. And Ner begat Kish, and Kish begat Saul, and Saul begat Jonathan, and Malkishua, and Abinadab, and Eshbaal. And the son of Jonathan was Merib Baal, and Merib Baal begat Micah. And the sons of Micah were Python, and Melech, and Teriah, and Ahaz. And Ahaz begat Jehoiada, and Jehoiada begat Alameth, and Asmaveth, and Zimri, and Zimri begat Mosa. And Mosa begat Binia, Rapha was his son, Eleasa his son, Azel his son. And Azel had six sons, whose names are these, Azrakam, Bakaru, and Ishmael, and Shiariah, and Obadiah, and Hanan. All these were the sons of Azel. And the sons of Eshek, his brother, were Ulam, his firstborn, Jehush, the second, and Elephalet, the third. And the sons of Ulam were mighty men of valor, archers, and had many sons and sons' sons, an hundred and fifty. All these are the sons of Benjamin. John chapter 19. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. The chief priests therefore and officers saw him. They cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went out again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him, on either side one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. 
This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus, therefore, saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierce. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about an hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus therefore because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. 